welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Hopalong Cassidy. The original air date is February 3rd, 1950, and the title is Coming Attraction, Murder. Let's get into it. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. The same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? We call this one coming attraction, Murder. It's one that began as California and I were heading back to the Bar 20. We had detoured a ways to visit an old friend of mine, MacDonald MacDonald, who was, you'll be relieved to know, a Scotsman. He had written me about his hotel, the Pride of Quincy, a hustling little town in the panhandle. Quincy wasn't much different than most cow towns, except possibly for the owner of its hotel monopoly, who with 40 years in the West still smelled of heather and talked with the butter of the highlands on his tongue. So this is Quincy, huh? Seems almighty quiet, Hoppy. (laughs) Well, this is one time we're not looking for excitement, California. This is just a quiet call on an old friend. What you stopping for? This poster tacked on the tree. Looks like you're in luck. Quincy is bringing in entertainment for tomorrow night. Ah, coming attraction. Uh, Jack, Jack, we line Dupree. Chantuzzi. (laughs) Say, this is great. I really get a kick out of them magic acts. <laughs> California, that's a French word. Means she's a singer. Uh, oh, oh, sure, sure, sure. I know it all the time. I just wanted to see if you did. And, uh-huh. Uh, where do we find this friend of yours? Right across the street, the hotel. Come on, you old faker. Let's look up McDonald's. Ah, there's Mac over at the desk. Good morning. Got a couple of rooms, mister? Sure, I have. Copy. <laughs> oh, man, you're a sight for my eyes. <laughs> Mac, meet my partner, California Carlson. California, meet McDonald McDonald. Ah, uh, friend of Hoppies is my friend as well. I'm glad to meet you, too. <laughs> oh, for a man who's making money, you don't seem too happy, Mac. Uh, as a matter of fact, something's weighing on my mind. That's so? There's trouble coming to Quincy. Oh, we'll be glad to do anything we can to help, Mac. Ah, that I'm pleased to hear, Hoppy. And with such a promise, I'll tell you what the trouble is. I've obligated myself and had a singer imported from New York. I was hoping to make a few dollars. But then I got the note. Note? An ominous note, to be sure. A warning? Aye. Here. I'll show you. Warning. Quincy doesn't need a singer. Send Mr. Free back on the first stage or she will die. What will I do, Hoppy? I can't send the lassie back when I paid her for a week's performance. I think when she sees the note, she may be willing to give the money back. Of course, it may be just a practical joke. But, Hoppy, it's in my bones that this note means death. Well, if it does and Mr. Free stays, you better change that poster. Change? I don't understand you, laddie. Make it read, Coming Attraction, Murder. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Coming Attraction, Murder. Stage is late, Hoppy. Very late. Stop pacing, Mac. You're wearing out the floor of your office. There's no danger to Miss Dupree until she gets here. And none if she decides to go back on the next stage. 
Oh, sorry, Mac. Thought you were alone. Ah, come in, Barra. Doc, <laughs> these are friends of mine. Hop along Cassidy and California Carlson. Uh, John Barra, our banker, and Doc Baker, our sawbones. Howdy. Pleased to meet you. Howdy. Likewise, gentlemen. And I, too. Getting ready to send your singing star back, Mac? Uh, with the aid of Hoppy here, I may not have to, Barra. Well, that's good, Mac. We'll get to hear the old girl sing, and you won't lose any money. Aye. It's a fate I hope to avoid, Doc. Well, aren't you depending a little strong on your friends, though, Mac? No offense, men, gentlemen, but uh, it seems a trifle dangerous to allow Miss Dupree to remain after that threat to her life. I think it's her choice, Mr. Barron, not ours. Yeah? Yeah, well, of course. Well, call on me if I can help in any way. Meanwhile, I've got a call to make at the Rolling Y. Uh, you uh, not be meeting uh, Miss Dupree then, Barra? Oh, I'll see her tomorrow, Mac. Happy to have you, gentlemen. Good day. Coming, Doc? Yes. Uh, see you folks later. Blamed if I've been called a gentleman so many times in all my life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you'll pardon, Barrow. It's his background. He was an Easterner up until ten years or so ago. Hey, ain't that the stage coming down the street? Sure is, California. If you didn't mind, Hoppy, I'll meet Mr. Prey first and I'll bring her in here to see you. I didn't want a lot of talk going around about you being her bodyguard yet. Sure, Mac. We'll wait here. Doggone. Uh, I wonder if this Shantuzi uh, looks like Hoppy, eh? Uh, I'll take a look through the window. She's getting out of the stage. Hey, there's two of them. Uh, and ain't neither of them uh, very pretty, Hoppy. Uh, they can't be singers. How can you tell from here? Well, I've seen singers in saloons from Montana to Monterey. And I ain't never seen the one that weren't at least uh, passable. Not that I ever had anything to do with them, Hoppy. In New York, maybe they pay attention to their voices instead of their faces. Dang, Easterners ain't no judgment. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Bray? Uh, may I present Hopalong Cassidy and California Carlson. How do you do, Mr. Prey? Same here. Enchanté, mes amis. Uh, where's the other one, Hoppy? Oh, I hear you, fuzzy face. That was my maid, Louise. She's gone to unpack the clothes. Fuzzy face, uh, Hoppy. You hear that? <laughs> she called me fuzzy face. Uh, should teach you to shave, California. I shaved only last week. You want me to act like a dude? Or... <laughs> it couldn't be done. But let's get down to business. Did you tell Mr. Pree about the note, Mike? No, I didn't have time, Hoppy. Note? What is this note? I am being mashed? What? Uh, oh, no, Mr. Pree. This note is a warning, a serious warning. You may not want to unpack your clothes. Here, read it. Oh, she better get out of town, or she will die. Oh, what is this? Am I the sitting buzzer? Uh, duck, lady. Why? I, uh... Why? Why should I duck? I I, I meant you uh, meant to uh, sit and duck. Oh, you talk so funny, fuzzy face. Please, gentlemen, what is the meaning of this note? It is the joke, no? It is a joke we think no. And to be safe, it might be best if you leave Quincy at once. I will not leave. I came to spend a vacation as well as work. Nobody makes Jacqueline Dupre the quitter. I stay. Well, Mac, I guess Quincy gets a singer, and California and I have a job. I guess you do, laddie. Well, how is this? We're your bodyguards, Mr. Pree. At least until we know if you're safe. Oh, is so? Oh, then get a horse for me. You guard me while I ride this afternoon. But you're not going to ride now. You must be tired. But I am not tired. I'm only restless from being cramped in the interior of that horrible sage coach. Uh Stage, lady, not sage. There you go, fuzzy face. I like you, but you sound so silly. Monsieur Hoppy, I shall meet you in front of the hotel in one hour. Agreed? Agreed, Mr. Free, but... Uh... In one hour, monsieur. Sheriff Harkness? Yeah, Harkness, what's on your mind, stranger? Name's Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. This is my partner, California Carlson. So? So McDonald asked us to help keep Mr. Pree from being killed. Oh, you mean that note? Well, I ain't gonna chase no crackpot letter writers. And you're not planning to take action to investigate the note? I am not. Now get out of here. I'm busy. If I were you, I'd start being sheriff before someone takes that star away from you. <laughs> Yeah. 
Here's the horse for Miss uh, Dupree, Hoppy. Uh, you sure you don't want me to ride with you? No, I don't think so, California. You stay here in town and keep your ears open. I want to know if anyone knows Miss Dupree. I get you. Try to learn if anyone would profit by her not appearing tomorrow night. Right, Hoppy. I'll keep my ears flapping and my eyes peeled. I'm all ready, Monsieur Hoppy. But why does Fuzzy Face want to peel his eyes? Uh, oh, lady, it's just an expression. <laughs> Here, let me give you a hand up. Oh, thank you. Uh, m- Monsieur Fuzzy Face, then you do not really peel the eyes? Uh, oh, no, 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 of course not. Uh, that'd be silly. Uh... Oh, we. Oui. Then you only flap the ears. I... Oh, <laughs> He's turning wait. blue. Maybe we'd better ride. See you later, California. This country, quel magnifique. Oh, it is so big, so wonderful. You stand up pretty well for an Easterner. Ah, I am not an infant, monsieur. For ten years I have been in the show business, ever since my husband ran away. It has not been easy, struggling first against the scandal, then against the hard heart of the public. But it has toughened me. Mm, beyond the matter of a few hours' exercise or a threat. To that I can testify. Besides, the note is probably from a cracked pot. Oh, in New York, I get many such foolish... Oh, mon Dieu! Down! Over to those rocks, quick! Monsieur! M- monsieur, what do we do? Keep down. I'll see if I can spot the smoke of his rifle. Oh! oh. oh monsieur Hoppy, that dirty pig, he's killed you. Uh, not quite. Oh, my head. I sure got creased, though. Well, I guess our friend has left. We'd better get back to town. I agree, monsieur. One thing is certain. This man who shoots at us, he is no crackpot. He's mighty set on you not staying around. Yeah, you could say he's dead set. <laughs> Ah, that was a fine meal, Mac. Makes me forget my sore head. Do you think Mr. Pree will be safe tonight? Well, I've wanted to stay in her room, and California's guarding the door. No one will get past him, and I'll take the post at midnight. Aye, it's a good precaution. Evening, gentlemen. Uh, Howdy, Mac. Ready for the game? Barrow and I are, and Doc Baker will be here soon. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm not feeling much like pinnacle tonight, Sheriff. You and Barrow, pour yourselves a drink. Yeah, Hoppy? No, thanks. Well, I guess Miss Dupree left on the evening stage, eh, Mac? No, no, she's still with us, Barra. Uh, she wouldn't have leave, so Hoppy in California are standing guard to see that nothing happens to her. Uh, what's the rag on your head, Cassidy? You bump into something? Yeah, a slug. A slug? slug. Uh, that's right. Seems that Quincy breeds a fancy dry gulcher, Sheriff. A dry gulcher? What are you talking about, Mr. Cassidy? Just that the note writer gave us a last warning this afternoon. Took shots at us over near Coyote Pass where Mr. Pree and I were riding. Well, she'll have to leave. You can't let her stay here with somebody shooting at her. Aren't you forgetting the lady, gents? It's up to her. And believe me, she wants to stay. Uh, well, uh, uh, I hate to run out, gentlemen, but uh, I've an errand I want to do. Now, uh, wait, Barrow. I'll go with you. All right. Remember what I said, Cassidy? Oh, I'm not liable to forget it, Sheriff. Not liable at all. Yeah, good night, Barrow. Sheriff. Good night. Until Doc Baker, the game's off. You're right. We should make Mr. Pray leave somehow. She's an awfully stubborn lady. Uh, you know, a man could do worse. Why, you dandy-legged Scotsman. You're turning into a Romeo. Uh, but it's about time. My Juliet seems to be quite a target. Yeah, and so far our suspects include the population of Quincy and surrounding ranches. <laughs> Mac, that's from upstairs. A scream. A woman's scream. Jacqueline. Jacqueline! Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Coming Attraction, Murder. While California stood guard outside the threatened Miss Dupre's hotel room... Mac and Hoppy were talking in Mac's office. 
Their conversation was interrupted by a shot and a scream from Miss Dupre's room above them. And we now find them investigating. California, what's happened? Uh, it's Miss Dupree and her maid. Uh, Miss Dupree? Is she, she just fainted, but her maid's been shot. Through that window, Hoppy. Uh, California, clear those people out of the hall. Mac, get the dock, quick. The killer probably fired from that alley across the street. No way to catch him now. Uh, all right now, folks. Clear out. Now, back to your rooms. Come on, I keep moving. This ain't no medicine show. Hoppy. Hubby, you stop, Baker. Met him in the hall. Good. Take a look at the maid here, Doc. I think she's pretty badly wounded. Yes. Uh, Mac, get me some hot water. Aye, right away. Uh, the other one? She's just fainted? Yeah. Shall I put her on the bed? No, I'll take her to another room where she can rest. I'll need space to work. Uh, here, here's a sedative. Give it to her when she comes around. Come on, California. Give me a hand. Yeah, I've got her. Open our door for me. There she is. See if you can bring her around, California. Right, Hoppy. Uh, this picture's cold water in it. California. No! Too late. I think I'll leave you with her. You threw the water. You give her the sedative. I'll see how the maid's doing. Uh, no, 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 Hoppy. I, 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 Hoppy, come back. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I was... Oh! No, not you! Uh, 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 lady, it's just me. It's California. You know, uh, oh. uh, well, Fuzzy face. Oh, what a startle you gave me. I thought I'd died and gone to... Well, never mind. But you do look a lot like... Oh, uh, uh, here's the sedative. I'm all wet. Fuzzy face, did you drunk me? Uh, dunk, lady. Dunk? Oh, so. Now you think I am the donut. Uh, oh, never mind. Just take the pill. Uh, come on, now. Please take the pill. Now, please. Please. How is she, Doc? Sinking fast. Uh, more water's being heated downstairs, Doc. <laughs> How's Mr. Plea, Hoppy? Uh, well, she was having a moist awakening when I left. Huh? Uh, Mac, you can forget the other hot water. She doesn't need it now. Doc, you mean... She's dead. <laughs> Ah, here's the spot where the killer took those shots at us yesterday, California. What do you think you'll find, Hoppy? I don't know. There's no place else to start. The bullet we took from the hotel wall was too mashed to tell us what kind of a gun fired it. Yeah. Oh, gone. If I had been smarter, it wouldn't have been fired at all. Ah, don't go start blaming yourself, California. No one could have figured the killer to take that kind of a gamble. Shooting through a shaded window at a shadow... I only wish we could have made Miss Dupree leave town on that stagecoach. Now at least we got her out of town for a while. That was a slick bit of smuggling uh, you and Matt did. Uh, but you think she'll be all right at his ranch? Safer than the town, that's a cinch. Hey, hey, look here, California. What you find? A heel print. Pretty faint, but you can make it out. Where? Yeah, well, what do you know? Uh-huh, the heel's narrowing. Let's get back to town. You got a little chore to do. Yeah? What? Stealing. Uh, what? That's right. There's something I want you to uh, uh, borrow for me. Come on, get the horses. I'll tell you about it on the way in. <laughs> You go on, California. Be careful. I'll meet you at the hotel later. Right, Hoppy. Over here. Come on, Mac. Hoppy, what's all this California tells me about you finding the heel print on the pass? Yeah, and we found some footprints. That narrows it down to a few certain people. Does it now? Are you sure? Who? Not now, Mac. But if you'll help me, I'll show you the killer this evening. Uh, anything, Hoppy. Anything to take the danger from Jacqueline. From Jacqueline? Well, you are working fast, Mac. Uh, never mind the progress, Hoppy. Uh, what do you want me to do now? Get up a pinochle game for the evening. What? Hoppy, I'd appreciate it if you'd be more serious. I am very serious, Mac. And tell everyone that I'm bringing Mr. Dupree in to meet them later. Don't say why, just keep it mysterious. After smuggling her out to town, you'd bring her back to face being killed? I'll not do it, Hoppy. It's too risky. Mac, 
Trust me and do as I say. Uh, that's again my wishes. Now, where are you going? Out to the ranch to see Miss Dupree. With her help, the killer's going to stretch rope plenty soon. See you tonight. <laughs> Uh, Hoppy, who well, now? Where in the name of Jupiter you be? Getting nails for a coffin. You get what I told you to? Yeah, yeah. I swiped it out of his coke when he was eating. Here. But uh, what's it for, Hoppy? Never mind. Just back my play. It's after seven. Max Pinochle game should be in full swing. Pinochle? Pinochle. But you stay out here and guard that office there. I don't want our killer to run off. Oh, Hoppy, uh, we're a hand short. I figured you would be, Mac. One man was certain to back out of meeting Mr. Pree before witnesses. Let's go have a talk with him, shall we? Hey, you're being a wee bit dramatic, Hoppy. It's hard to believe you're right. Only four men knew Mr. Pree intended to stay after the warning. Finding the heel print of the city shoe out at Coyote Pass eliminated one. Our good friend Sheriff Harkness here. He wears boots. Thanks, Cassidy. Don't thank me. I'd be far from crying if you'd been the one. So you were left with three suspects. Two, Mac. You sure weren't going to kill the woman after you'd paid her to come. Then of the two, I remembered one of them knowing something he shouldn't about her. Something no one should have known unless he knew her and pretty well. And that? That was the fact that she's an older woman. Did you know how old she was? Oh, not until she arrived, Toppy. And even now she lays claim to only 39. And of that, I uh, have my suspicions. Yet one man knew she was not young. Let's go in here, gents, and meet the killer. Dr. Baker. Of New York. Cassidy. I was afraid you'd be coming. Do come in, gentlemen. Come in. Pardon me if I don't rise to greet you. I must say you're come, Doc. I have no reason to be otherwise, Mac. As yet, that is. I uh, see Miss Dupree is not with you. No, but we don't need her to identify you, Doc. You drop something out of Coyote Pass that pins this thing right around your neck. Take a look. The thermometer, uh, Doc's thermometer. What? Why, that's not mine. I have mine right here in my coat. It's gone. There it is in front of you, Doc. You even got your initials on the case. Uh, it's his, all right. Sheriff, I guess it's time for you to take over. Yeah. Come on, killer. Stand back, all of you. I have a gun in my lap under the desk, and I'll kill the first one who moves. I would. Uh, you see, I feared tonight was a trap, so I prepared. Put it away, Doc. You can't run. California's outside on guard. <laughs> You're the smart one, aren't you, Cassidy? You you thought you were going to send me up to hang. Well, I've murdered in New York and didn't hang. I won't out here. Get back against the wall. All of you. A lot of sheep. <laughs> I may even kill you all. <laughs> Drop your guns, quick. You too, Cassidy. You dirty snooper. If it wasn't for that long nose. Drop them, I said. Doc, I'm kind of fond of these guns, and I'd sure hate to break the handles by dropping them on the floor. Uh, here, I'll hold them out butts first, and you can take them from me. <laughs> Sure, sure. I'll, I'll take some Cassidy, and then I'll kill you, you meddling fool, with your own gun. Here. Oh! Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Doc. Doc. No use, Mac. He's not with us. Aye. Uh, well, it saved us the bother of hanging him. That was a neat trick, Hoppy. Yeah, the best example of rolling a gun I've ever seen. I saw Wes Harden pull that trick on Wild Bill Hickok in Abilene, but not any slicker. I had the advantage of Doc Baker. He was no gunman. Aye. Uh, 
He was just a killer. But he was nervy enough. Up until you made him see you had proof of his guilt. Yeah, I wasn't sure it would work either. California stole that thermometer for me. Stole? Well, you had a goal. Stealing a killer's thermometer and then making him confess with it. Happy I mean your debt for tonight's work. For more than you know, Mac, Miss Dupree was freed to marry you tonight. Eh? Uh-huh. Doc Baker. He was her husband back in New York, only his name wasn't Baker. She put up with these mental quirks until he finally murdered a man and deserted her. Her husband? Yeah. That was his motive for wanting her to stay out of Quincy. She would have recognized him and reported him to the New York authorities. Oh, happy it's hard to know how to repay you. But maybe I can make a settlement on your uh, bill at my hotel. When are you leaving? Probably tomorrow, Mac. Why? Uh, that'd be two days at five dollars and a quarter a night. At ten dollars and fifty cents. Happy, my friend. As a gesture of gratitude, I'm cutting it down. Well, thanks, Mac. That's thoughtful of you. Aye, to ye. I'll make it ten dollars even. The fifty cents will be my loss. <laughs> Thus ends the almost ending to Hoppy's story, Coming Attraction Murder. Almost ending, I say, because we're wondering if MacDonald ever married his lady fair, Miss Dupre. Hoppy's next story, titled Wet Beef and Dry Bones, concerns the old legend of Massacre Canyon when the ghosts of Redskins dance at midnight. It's an exciting one, so don't miss the next episode of Hopalong Cassidy. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Coming Attraction Murder was written by Herb Purdom. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.